Today on CG Off-Road, we're going to make our 2017 Raptor stop a whole lot better. The F-150 Raptor is an absolute monster right from the factory, but the braking really needs an improvement, especially if you get a larger wheel and tire. So today we're going to be installing this Willwood Big Brake Kit on our 2017 Raptor. If you want to make your Raptor stop as good as it accelerates, this Willwood Big Brake Kit is exactly what you need. This kit comes with everything you need to significantly upgrade the front brakes on your Raptor, including massive six-piston calipers, 15.5-inch two-piece rotors, stainless steel brake lines, and upgraded brake pads. It's going to give your truck a custom look and improved pedal feel in addition to better stopping, so today we're going to install it on our 2017 F-150 Raptor. Tools you'll need for this installation, 21mm socket, half-inch ratchet, 10mm socket, 3-8 ratchet, 11mm wrench, 13mm wrench, 19mm wrench, a set of pliers, a trim panel removal tool, and you might need a hammer to remove the rotors. Okay, so we have the truck up in the air and we remove the wheels. What we have to do is remove the factory brake caliper, rotor, and hose. We're gonna start off by removing this 10 millimeter bolt right here. Remove the two 21 millimeter bolts holding the caliper to the spindle. Once you remove the bolts, hang the caliper off to the side. The brake rotor can now be removed, but it's probably going to be a little stuck, so we're going to give it a couple love taps with a hammer. The dust shield's a little bit too small for the upgraded brake rotor, so it needs to come off. There's three 8mm bolts holding it on. At this point, you can now install the Wilwood hat onto the rotor, just like this, and then we're going to secure it with the provided hardware. Notice the hole in the head of this bolt. This is where the safety wire is going to go through. We're going to be installing these bolts with a half inch socket. Once you get the bolts installed, you're going to torque them to 25 foot pounds in an alternating sequence. Once you get all the bolts torqued, you can safety wire them according to the instructions. The caliper mounting bracket can now be installed. It's going to go right here on the spindle. Install the provided bolt with a washer. Install one shim over the bolt, then install it into the bracket. Then tighten the bolts down. Initially install one shim on each stud on the caliper bracket. Now that the rotor is properly assembled and wire tied, we can install it. And these are directional, so when you install it, Make sure that this arrow up top is facing forward. Lightly lubricate the studs on the caliper bracket. If you take note at the calipers, there's three pistons on each side. Two are smaller and one's bigger. You're going to install the caliper to where the larger piston is up top. Then slide the caliper over the brackets and over the rotor. If you'll notice when we slid this caliper on, it's hitting the rotor, so we need to take it back off and put more shims on the caliper bracket. I have everything removed, and we're going to leave the one shim on that we previously installed, but we're going to add two more to each bolt. So that's a total of three shims on each bolt. After reshimming our caliper bracket, our rotor is now nicely centered. If you're having trouble getting it centered, make sure that the hub is clean. You might need a wire brush to make sure it's clean, and then once you get it nice and centered, you're good to go. Now we're going to install our washers and nuts on our bracket mounting studs to make sure that the caliper clears the rotor. Tighten down the nut with a 9 16 12 point socket. Everything clears with the caliper. Now the mounting bolts can be torqued to 120 foot pounds. We're ready to install the brake pads. We have to remove that pretzel looking clip inside the caliper with a pair of needle nose pliers. Give it a pinch and pull it out and make sure you don't lose it. With both clips removed, you can slide these pins out. Slide your brake pads into the caliper. Once you get the pads in, reinstall your pins. The pretzel clips can then be reinstalled. Make sure they're seated in their groove properly. 
Note that the pads are not completely flush with the rotor, so we need to shim the caliper out just a little bit. We're gonna add a shim to each stud and reinstall the caliper and check our clearance. The brake pads are looking pretty good. We can now torque these lock nuts to 65 foot-pounds. We can now install our brake line fittings. We're gonna be using some high temp thread sealant just to be safe. Make sure when you install these lines that you have them facing up. Remove the vacuum hose from your brake line bracket, just to give you a little bit more room to work with. Thread your braided brake line into your caliper. Tighten it with an 11 millimeter wrench. Remove your hard brake line from your brake hose with a 13 millimeter line wrench. Make sure you have a drain pan ready to catch your brake fluid. Completely disconnect your brake hose, then install your new brake line. Thread your new brake hose into the factory brake line, get it snugged up and make sure it doesn't leak, and then you're ready for bleeding. Okay, we have the brakes properly bled. Now we can install the factory wheels, but these brakes are so big they actually require a 19 inch wheel or bigger to fit. Okay, we got our Willwood Big Brake Kit installed on our Raptor, and the brakes are actually so big we had to install these 20 inch rotiform wheels. They're looking a lot better than the 17s, and the truck stops a whole lot better. I feel a lot safer driving this truck now, and installation really wasn't too bad. It's probably going to take you about two to three hours, and before you know it, you'll be heading off road.